welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about a very very interesting uh, part of uh, biochemical calculations it's all about amino acid pk ph and protonation deprotonation strategies and this is a request like after watching this video i hope you'll be able to understand and answer all this question related to amino acid protonation and deprotonation as well as peptide protonation and deprotonation remember this video is not about the pi values because i'm going to prepare a new video other video regarding the pi values after this so you can also watch that video if you watch both of these videos you can answer any question related to this part that were there in csre gcnet exam or gate exam in biochemistry so let's begin with amino acid pk ph value to understand this whole idea you know the question that they normally ask us is they give us an amino acid and <clears throat> they ask us to find out whether their amino acid will be protonated or deprotonated generally they ask us the net charge of an amino acid now why we have all this idea we have net charge and other things remember one thing if i draw the structure of amino acid where we have the alpha carbon which we have uh, nh and c double o so this is how uh, an amino acid looks like it has an amino terminal and an acid terminal both of these terminals are out there and normally an amino acid can have this because you know co is generally one negative charge and nh if it's uh, nh3 then there is a one positive charge normally it's nh2 so it is simply uh, one plus one minus cancels each other out so normally they present in a net charge of zero so these are the idea that that's normally present you know so amino acids can have this different charges based on their this alpha carb uh, this this carbonyl carbon as well as based on the idea of this alpha amino i mean group out there so both of them can be protonated or deprotonated depending upon the ph that they are present in okay so this is the idea there are two ideas that we need to know pka and ph we know what ph is all about okay but what is pka pk is a value at which uh, which can dictate which can tell whether an amino acid in this case or any other molecule if you take any other acid as well without amino acid even they can also whether they are going to take a, a proton from the solution or they are going to uh, donate a proton to the solution which we can figure out with the value from pka and pk is a one component to calculate the value of the ph with the help of henderson hasselbalch equation which we are not going to talk and understand today we want to understand uh, this concept so that we can answer the math question that were asked from this part so in this case what you can see the totally that this this amine group and this acid group both of these things are present and one simple idea regarding this ph and pk remember one thing that if the environment is acidic like if the ph is very low surrounding the environment of an amino acid that means low ph means it's acidic and low ph means lots and lots of protons are out there okay and if the environment is basic means a lots and lots of oh is out there okay so in any situation remember one thing if it's a battle between this ph and pka because if the ph is less and if the pk is more then what what does that mean more pk less ph less ph means more and more proton outside what does that mean it means the protons will try to bind with the molecule that is out there so the molecule will win and we can say that the molecule will be protonated so in this case the molecule if, if the molecule is is amino acid then we can say the amino acid will be protonated if pka is greater than ph if the ph is low than pka then only the amino acid will be protonated that means it will add proton to the amino acid in the co or nh on the other hand if it's ph greater than pka then what will happen more ph means there will be lots and lots of oh minus in the environment and as oh minus is negatively charged we know what they are going to neutralize the amino acid is going to neutralize the oh because they will attract oh by donating their proton so the amino acid will be deprotonated deprotonated so 
it will remove the proton that is bound with the amino acid to the CO or NH group, NH3 or COH. From that state, it will release the proton so that the proton can interact with OH minus and then stabilize it, okay, and form water. So this is the idea, you know. So don't need to confuse this ter term. Remember only this idea of whether there will be a lot of proton or a lot of OH minus. If it's a lot of proton, then what happens? You need to the, the, the pH is less only, then only there will be a lot of protons. In that, that case, protonation is required because more protons is out there in the solution. On the other hand, if it's more OH, then proton needs to be transferred to the OH so that it can bind to the OH. That's the only simple idea that you need to remember. So pK greater than pH, protonation, pK less than pH, deprotonation. Okay, so once you know this idea, now you can solve uh, the question related to finding about charge of amino acid. They can ask you questions like given you a specific amino acid and want you to find out the charge of that amino acid with changing pH or they can also give you a polypeptide chain where multiple amino acids are there and they also want you to solve uh, and find the charge of the net charge of the whole polypeptide chain. Now some people think like calculating the charge of polypeptide chain may be difficult but it's not that much difficult it's simply easy once you know how to do that because for amino acids it's only one or two two or three maximum groups but for a polypeptide there are multiple more than three groups uh, that we need to think of so let's begin with one example in here but in all these cases when they give you a question they will tell you the value of pKa because you need to solve about pK and pH They'll, they'll tell you the pA, they'll also tell you the pKa. But if sometimes they don't mention pKa, in that case you need to know the values of pKa for each of these amino acids so that you can calculate uh, the net charge for polypeptide chain. They sometimes can give questions like that as well. So that may be difficult. So it, it's, it's uh, like uh, I'm going to provide you a chart of the pKa values. You can easily get a chart of pKa values in Google Images from where you can easily remember the pKa values of few important uh, amino acids like glycine, histidine, uh, arginine, tryptophan, tyrosine and all the acidic amino acids and basic amino acids which are really important. So you can remember that. For example now if I, if I give you a question regarding let's say lysine, uh, let me take this and erase this part. So let's draw lysine in here. If you draw lysine in here, it will look like H, N, right? and there will be alpha carbon H and the R group of lysine is also H and then C O O. This is how it will look like okay. So this is the glycine. So the glycine is the simplest amino acid so we start with glycine and remember what they told us here in this question is the pK of the CO this one because these are two ionizable groups out there CO and amine. So the CO or carboxylic, this is uh, the pKa equals to 2.3 and the pKa for this amine equals to 9.6. So what does this pKa value signifies? pKa value will signify whether at a pH they are going to, this amino acid is going to take a proton or donate a proton. So let's say now begin with a uh, pH of let's say 1, pH of 1. So let's begin. Look, look at the different scenario. So if we begin with, uh, this is not much ink available, so let me write it, pH of 1. So what will happen if, if you look at pH of 1? If you look at pH of 1, pH 1 is less than both these pK values, right, in both CO as well as NH. So if pH is less than pK, then what happens? Protonation. So a protonation will happen in here, another protonation will happen in here. So what will have a net protonation in both the sides? So a protonation in here, so normally what was the charge? There is a negative one, so now we, a proton is added in this part, another proton is added in this part. So minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0 in this side and one extra proton is added. So the net charge at pH 1 for glycine will be plus 1. Right? Now let's look at a second situation. Let's look at a pH of 2.3 which is exactly the same as the pK value of COO. So as the pH is exactly the same, if the pH 
because we talked about if pH is less or greater than pK. We haven't talked about what happens if pH is equal to pKa. If pH equals with pKa, then half of ionizable groups will be protonated, half will be deprotonated. That's what exactly is going to happen. So at pH 2.3, what we can see is that in pH 2.3, pH 2.3 is less than pKa in this amine. So what will happen? Protonation. So plus 1 in this side. But in this side, as pKa is equals to the pH, half will be protonated, half will be deprotonated. So you know earlier it was minus 1. Now half of them are protonated. Okay, and half uh, are deprotonated. So what will be the value in here? What will be the value in here? Simply half protonated, half deprotonated give us minus half. So plus 1 in this amine and minus half charge in CO, the total net charge is plus half. Now let us say the pH of 7, pH of 7 is very natural pH. Of physiological pH. So pH of 7, what will happen? pH 7 is greater than pKa here and if pH is greater than pKa, deprotonation happens. So deprotonation in here, what will happen if deprotonation happens in this side? This will be, this will remain minus 1 and pH 7 is less than pKa at amine. So protonation plus 1. So what we have? We have a plus 1 and we have a minus 1. So the net charge will be 0 at pH 7. So this pH where the net charge of an amino acid is 0 is known as the state or known as pi. So for glycine, the pi is 7, pH of 7, a pH at which the net charge becomes 0 in this case. Okay. And now if you look at here, pH of 10 or let us say pH of 12, very high pH, very basic environment. pH 12 is greater than both pKa at carbon, uh, CO as well as at amine. So what will happen? Deprotonation in both this case. So minus 1 this side is already there and minus 1 at, so minus 1 is already there so nothing is left to be deprotonated in here but a deprotonation from amine. So it will be ultimately minus 1, net minus 1 charge, right? So this will be the way of how glycerin will behave based on changing pH values. That's how it changes. Now instead of glycerin, because in glycerin, uh, sorry, in glycine, sorry. Uh, in glycine, it's very easy because the R group is only hydrogen. But there are amino acids like lysine, the R group is also charging. Histidine, the R group is also ionizable. Uh, acidic amino acid like aspartic acid or glutamic acid, the R groups are ionizable. So in those cases, generally the question that they will ask involving those uh, as an example. So in the second part of the class, I'll be telling you about uh, calculating the net charge of a polypeptide where I'll involve more aspartic acid and other charged amino acids so that you understand how they work as well. You don't need to bother about whether there is a third group for calculating the net charge because it's always comparing the pH and pKa because this is the rule pH less than pKa protonated, pH greater than pKa deprotonated. That's it. It's, it's not going to change. This is the rule. This is the law that we'll follow. But while calculating the pI, you need to involve with understanding two pKs and taking two pKs from the three pKs. And that becomes a difficult challenge for you to check which PK you will choose. That's what we'll talk about in the next video. But for this video, we'll only talk about the net charge of the polypeptide.